Hey pool chasers! So a few weeks ago we discussed ways to reduce chlorine usage in a pool. Well, on today's episode we are talking about a product that we think can help you do that. Our friends over at SolarBreeze have launched their brand new Aerial line. We love the NX2 model, but they've improved upon it and made the units much more nimble and effective. What we love most from a service perspective is that the Solar Breeze does a lot of the skimming for you, which allows you and your technicians to focus on the more important aspects of the job each visit. The team over at Solar Breeze has always listened to their customers, and as you'll hear on the episode, we think their new improvements have knocked it out of the park. You'll definitely want to add the new aerial to your team's arsenal. So please enjoy episode 123 with Paul Sim of Solar Breeze. Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Viafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. All right, Paul. Well, thanks for joining us again here in the studio. How you been? Well, thanks for having me. It's great to be back. And boy, you guys have really changed things around here a little bit. I can see you guys are growing too. And 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 so are we. So uh, it's exciting. You know, the pool industry has been pretty exciting in the last uh, couple of years, and particularly this this last year. So uh, <laughs> yeah. things have been great. It's been challenging. You know, 2020 has been, I think, a bit of a challenge for everyone. But we continue to grow, expand our uh, our market channels, uh, get more and more dealers and service people involved with our product. You know, we're also doing some internal changes structurally with the business that we can share with you as well. But no, it's been an exciting year for us and uh, and we're really looking forward to next year as well. Yeah, I mean, you're manufacturing things different. How is it affected by all this going on? Well, I tell you what, it's been a bit of a challenge. We had some supply chain challenges, you know, all through this year, just like I think everyone else in the uh, uh, pool industry did. But so we had times when we were kind of sold out of product and, you know, had to try to find ways to keep people going. We had times when it was challenging to get a hold of uh, parts so that we could do warranty repairs and, and keep people happy in the field. But, you know, we just kind of dug in and and I'm really proud of the team, the way they kind of stepped up and rose to the challenge. You know, we had some challenges this year on the customer service side because we were kind of hit by two things. One is there was this huge explosion in demand that happened because everyone was staying at home mm-hmm. and wanted to do something with their pool, get a, <laughs> get our, you know, so they're at, they're not spending money on travel or on restaurants. So they're going to spend money on their home. And so there, there was a, a pretty big explosion in demand. And then at the same time, we were hit a little bit with, you know, some folks that, that got sick and had to isolate. And, and then of course, everyone kind of went home and was working from home. And so So we were trying to deal with two or three times the demand with 75% of the staff. And and so we had some challenges. But once again, I'm just really proud of the team. They stepped up and we worked our way through it and and we got through it. And and now we're excited about moving forward. Yeah, I think you really get to see what your people are made of, you know, when, when crises and things happen like that, it's, it's kind of a cool thing and, or a bad thing, but you know, (laughs) you figure it out either way. Well, and and it, it really kind of shows the issues you have in your business too. Mm -hmm. And, and we clearly had some of those. And so we have to deal with those and fix those where we, we did that or are doing that. And, you know, sometimes you invest in technology to, to help you out. Sometimes you got to bring some new people on board and we did, a little bit of all to try to work through the issues. You know, the important thing is that you just keep focused on what is it we're trying to do, you know, how can we look after our customers best we can, and, you know, as much as possible, be honest with your customers about what's going on, too. People will usually be pretty understanding as long as you're honest and transparent about what's happening as well, so. Yeah, since the, you know, boom, I mean, people are staying home, pools are being built left and right. Have you guys been seeing more of the solar breezes being bought by homeowners that have a pool or more of the professionals like service companies? And things a like little that? bit of both, but we, you know, our demand from homeowners really exploded this year. In fact, we were sold out of product mid-year. We got some new product on and we sold out of that. And the reality is we probably could have sold 25 or 30 percent more than we did this year if we had the supply chain in place to support more production. So, but we didn't. And so you deal with what you got. 
But overall, it's been a good and, and successful year for us. And we're working through some changes and improvements to the business to, to be even better for 2021. That's awesome. We think you have a phenomenal product and we have them in our pool and I I swear by it. Yep. I swear by it. <laughs> Always have because my pool is clean as shit. Yeah. 24-7. <laughs> I look over my wall at my neighbor's pool, dirty, got leaves, got all kinds of crazy stuff in there. Soul Breeze is doing work. I swear to God, not just saying that. You yeah. can go back in the uh, Brothers Archive yes. and see I was talking the same shit over there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I love it. Um, it does really good. The only issue has been like the wheels over time, and I'm really excited about some of the yeah. innovations because that's really the only thing. But you guys have always you know, stepped up to the plate and taken care of that it, when there's problems. You know, philosophically, we sort of looked at trying to a little bit change the paradigm about how people think about cleaning their pools. Because, you know, most people, the debris flow comes into the pool, gets waterlogged, it sinks to the bottom. You know, by the time it's already gotten waterlogged and sunk to the bottom, it's already decayed, created bacteria in your pool and all that sort of thing. And then you have some sort of bottom cleaner that goes around and, and picks it up for the bottom, which means you got to circulate a bunch of water to pick all this debris up from the bottom. And so we looked at that and said, well, it would seem to us to make a lot more sense to actually get that debris off the surface before it sinks, right? Mm -hmm. And before it decays and before it gets waterlogged and before it creates so much bacteria in your pool. So that was the concept behind the original solar breeze and, and then the NX model, which we came out with four or five years ago. And you know, so for those of folks who aren't familiar with Solar Breeze and what it does, basically it's a, it's like a Roomba for your pool. It's a solar-powered robot that it's a boat that goes around the surface of your pool. It's got a paddle wheel at the rear that propels it through the water and paddle wheel at the front that scoops up all of the debris off the surface of your pool as it's going around and stores it inside. So it's an autonomous robot. And, you know, once in a while you have to get out and clean the robot out, dump the trash. You know, conceptually, if you get all that debris off the surface before it decays and sinks, then you get a lot less bacteria growth in your pool. Typically, your chemical usage goes down because you're not using as much sanitizer to, to kill the bacteria that's being created. And, you know, a lot of times you find you don't have to run the rest of your pool equipment quite as much because you're not getting as much debris on the bottom. A lot of folks, you know, my, myself with uh, our pool... I basically, you know, run the bottom cleaner once every week or 10 days for, for three or four hours because there's still some dirt and heavier dust that gets to the bottom. But basically all of the organic material gets picked up by the solar breeze. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really, especially now with everything going on with the chlorine tab shortage and everything, that's a good point you make of, you know, you're catching the debris up top so it's not sitting in the pool forever and creating all that bacteria and algae growth. So that's another good you know, our most recent episode was about how to use less sanitation. That's another great way to help is something like this. And, you know, we talked a lot about it on episode 58, if you haven't heard it. I think we were talking earlier specifically about three or four customers that we had that used them. We had them in several pools, but specifically these three or four that we made an extra effort to get these in the water because they had mesquite trees or Palo Verde trees or these things that have all this debris. And I think the real benefit of having it is, you know, some people will look at it, you're replacing your pool guy, but I don't think that's the case. You know, you, you, what you have to educate the customer is while we're not here, it's helping doing the work. We're still professionals. We're still chemists. We're still taking care of your equipment. We're still doing all the things that we do. But everybody knows like when you want to go swimming or you, we have kids, like you want to go swimming, you have to clean the pool. It's really annoying to do that for 30 minutes before you want to swim you probably just want to jump in and swim. But every time my kids want to go swimming, I have to go out there and skim the pool. So, you know, it helps save on that for sure. And there's so many variables out there, right? Like my plumbing is undersized and I don't have a dedicated suction. Right. So if I want to vacuum my pool, I have to manually do it and I have to go through the skimmer. I used to clog the line when I would do that and run into all types mm -hmm. of issues. But now having kind of that that I've had for years now as the solar breeze is that dedicated skimming source that is just picking up all that debris that's getting blown on top of the pool. So I don't have to do that. And if I do need to vacuum the pool 
for any reason, it's, you know, a very small amount. Um, maybe I'm just trying to get out of the house and trying to look like I'm doing right. something. I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but it's time for I'm daddy saying, to take a break. Yeah. I'm going to go skim the pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there's like all kinds of different situations because every pool is built a little bit differently. And it's nice to, there's something that can kind of just help with those different things. And dude, so many of the pools that we had them in, we saved these were pools that we legit spent an hour at, yes, an hour plus absolutely. at, and now we get to focus more on brushing and chems and actually looking at the equipment a lot more closely and all those different things and not have to focus because most of the time is spent skimming a pool. Mm -hmm. Like there are some pools that you're spending probably 80% of the time skimming the top of the pool. Yeah. That sucks. I'm not a big fan of, uh, <laughs> yeah, skimming. Well, we, we also yeah. talk a lot about wanting to keep your employees. If you have an employee that's skimming a pool for 45 minutes, nobody wants to do that job. So if you have something like a solar breeze in those harder pools that will help them out and that gives them the opportunity to work on the other parts of taking care of a pool, that could be really beneficial in keeping their days a little bit shorter because those long, hour-long pools are rough. <laughs> yeah. one, of our, one of our customers uh, coined the phrase that my pool is always swim ready. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't matter, you know, if I come home from work and I want to jump in the pool, I don't have to spend 15 or 20 minutes getting all that junk. Or, you know, if my kids don't like having bugs in the pool, I don't have to, you know, worry about that. Because the solar breeze looks after that. And, and you know, some people don't realize the, the solar panels charge the unit during the day. So it runs during the day off of the solar energy. But it generates a lot of surplus energy as well that gets stored in a battery. So when the sun goes down, it runs off of battery power for several hours. In Arizona here in, in the summertime, these units run pretty much around the clock. And even, even in the northern states in the summer, they'll run pretty much uh, around the clock as well. So if you've got an automated skimmer out there skimming your pool pretty much 24 hours a day, you don't, you don't get much debris left on the surface and not much left to decay and, and sink to the bottom. So it makes a big difference. And you mentioned about, um, you know, not skimming as much for the pool professional. Several of the folks that, uh, the pool professionals that, you know, like you guys encourage their customers to uh, acquire our product, uh, most of them say, look, you know, for an average pool, I, I typically save 15 or 20 minutes on my weekly visit because I don't have to skim as much and the pool's already, you know, surface is already clean. So it's like you said, then you can focus on the things where you actually add value to the customer, the, the, the chemistry, the state of the equipment, all of those kinds of things, which is, which is really the value added for a pool professional as opposed to just spending a lot of time skimming the pool. Yeah, but I mean, there's a ton of other things that you can be doing. I mean, if the pool skimmed up top and you might have been spending 30, 45 minutes there, maybe you can take on like another job. Exactly. You know what I mean? Maybe you can be cleaning the tiles or maybe you can be, I know that's kind of a whole nother thing, but there's something else that you can be doing that's actually making you more revenue. It's not like because we stopped skimming the top of the pool that they're not going to want me right. to do this anymore. There's a million other things that you can be doing and looking at. So, And that also add more value for the customer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just the, the time that it takes, you know, when we check in a pool and we're putting all the data into our CRM and taking all the photos and those different things, that is super time consuming. And those are things that people don't necessarily see or account for. And it's like you're, man, in every area of taking care of a pool, like I hope that there's more things like this where problems are being solved that we're getting kind of more time so we're not spending as much time in the backyard. Yeah, and and spending less time on the mundane stuff and spending more time on the stuff that, that really helps the pool uh, for the longer term Yeah, and the pool owner for the longer term as well. One other thing that, you know, I've had a few pool professionals mention is that, you know, sometimes, especially here in Arizona, we get monsoons and you get storms that come into other places. Um, around the country as well. And so, you know, they'll go in and in the morning and do their weekly service on the pool and, and then a monsoon will blow in and they'll get a call from a customer and say, did you, did you show up today? Was, you know, <laughs> was, did you? and so with the solar breeze there, you know, that the robots looking after all that surface debris when you're not there as well. And uh, overall, I think customers just stay happier because that pool is always clean. It's always swim ready. Right. Thank yeah, you. I think, you know, it's 
just when you talk about educating the customers, anybody can skim a pool anyways. That's not the value that you bring as a pool professional. You know, your water chemistry, everything else is, is really the value. You know, skimming a pool is, is easy. I mean, we've had, we have our kids do it with us sometimes. I mean, it's just, it's not really something that takes any skill. I mean, you get better at it as time goes. You can get quick with the net and stuff, but you know, it's something that but most, things can most go people wrong. can walk out and <laughs> yes, you can't go You wrong. can get fancy. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can try to skim pool. something from the bottom and dump your net. <laughs> yeah. That's, I'm not, that's I'm not, the worst uh, place to be. <laughs> I'm not trying to undervalue the skill of that, but I'm just saying it's, it's uh, you know, anybody can go skim a pool. It's not the what they're paying you for anyways, you know. Ooh, the early days have a, a full net and like, oh, you know what? I don't need oh, to dump man. it just yet. I'm just going to, I'm going to get this thing at the bottom and dump the whole thing. And you just have... <laughs> like a whole Palo Verde tree in suspension where it's like, yep, I'll have to come back here in a couple <laughs> hours. Yeah, I remember we switched to those smaller... To the oh, man. <laughs> when we switched to those smaller like fine debris nets and they, were t- they weren't as deep. <laughs> oh, man. Learned that lesson real quick. It was fun. <laughs> I'll be back. Yep. <laughs> we want to thank Pentair for supporting the show. You know, as a podcast for pool professionals, we know that when you sell products, it's your reputation on the line. And when they are Pentair products, it's theirs as well. That's why Pentair's got your back with their trade grade program, which supports your business and reputation by offering exclusive tools and support for lead generation, attractive product rebates and longer warranties, and an unmatched expertise when it comes to accurate equipment selection, setup, and service. So to learn more about how trade grade protects, empowers, and helps your business grow, Visit pentair.com forward slash trade grade. That's pentair.com forward slash trade grade or click the link below. So we know that the company was recently acquired. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? And just the, because there's huge benefits when, you know, being acquired by a bigger company. Yeah. So we're very excited about this. Um, we've had a relationship with Pivot International for a few years now, a couple of years well, since, I guess about 2017, they started manufacturing our products for us as the contract manufacturer. And then they did some engineering work for us as well uh, over the course of the evolution of the NX2 product. And we've always been challenged with, you know, a couple of issues for growth. One is if you want to try to double sales each year and you're in the hardware business, the amount of capital it takes to build that inventory and have it ready for pool season and all that sort of thing is 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 very challenging and very challenging for smaller companies like us to, to go out and raise that kind of capital. And then also, it's always been a challenge for us to have the right kind of manufacturing, engineering infrastructure in place to really support the ongoing development of the product and bring new technologies into the product. And so we ended up working out a relationship with Pivot International where they acquired a majority stake in the company. And we essentially created a new entity, Pivot Solar Breeze, it's called. And, you know, the myself and some of the other original stakeholders in solar pool technology still have a, a stake in Pivot Solar Breeze as well. The relationship with Pivot gives us the capital and the engineering expertise and the manufacturing capacity to really be aggressive about how we expand this cool product category, we think, um, more extensively across the entire pool industry and get more and more uh, pool owners uh, excited about the product and get more and more pool industry professionals excited about the product as well. And it's also given us an, an opportunity to make some real serious investments in some new product development. And in fact, you know, we have a new product coming out which we've actually just released this fall that will be available for delivery in uh, in the spring. And we're very excited about that. And so all of the, this new relationship just helps to expand our, our resource base so that we can really do a better job of looking after our customers and also grow the business faster as well. That's awesome. Have you ever tried to be on Shark Tank? I got. I, we, ha- I had to. I had to ask. We actually I feel a like Shark Tank the vibe right now. A few yeah. years back, we actually uh, applied to uh, to be on Shark Tank, and we weren't uh, we weren't selected. And I'm, they never really give you the reasons why you weren't selected. They they just tell you. You, you know what? Selected. I think that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> because they have some of the craziest people on there. I'm like, yeah, like we need to hear another person that like cooks brownies out of. <laughs> 
like their garage. <laughs> like you're telling me that this isn't more innovative than that, right? Yeah, <laughs> hybrid I, brownie. I, I think sometimes it's also um, typically they don't like niche businesses, and I think a lot of people, even though the pool industry, you know, is big and bigger than a lot of people really realize, I think a lot of people look at our product and the pool industry in general is still kind of a a niche market. Sure, and and so sometimes you know they they look for products that have, you know, much broader consumer demand perhaps than, uh, than, than pool industry products. So who knows? I don't know why. But right now we came out with a, an outcome in our relationship with Pivot that we're excited about and we don't really need them right now. So, so <laughs> we're, we're going to move this forward and build this business up and keep innovating the product and keep delivering uh, exciting solutions for our customers. And we're also going to look to maybe build out some new product lines with this as well and, and sort of add some additional, perhaps solar-related kinds of products to our product line. Very good. So nice. let's talk about the newest product which you brought here to the studio with you, which is the Aerial, and it looks phenomenal. It's freaking really rad, and it looks completely different than the mm -hmm. other one. So can you just tell us sure. more about it? So, you know, the principle is the same an automated skimmer that runs, you know, around the clock and removes debris from the pool. Uh, but our primary focus with Ariel were a couple of areas. One is we wanted to make it look nicer, you know, a little less utilitarian and a little more... Uh, sleek. Sleek. There you go. I like that. <laughs> a little more sleek. So so we focused a lo uh, more on the, uh, the look of the product. And the other area we really focused on was on the navigation. So... Those people who are familiar with the Solar Breeze and the NX series know that we had the or have the two front bumper wheels that rotate in opposite directions. And so when the unit hits the side of the pool, those bumper wheels spin and cause it to turn one way or the other. So it's a kind of mechanical navigation system. And it worked pretty well. Worked, you know, serviced us for several years in terms of building the the business. But there's also a lot of uh, parts and pieces and components that go into that mechanical system. And we wanted to try to reduce the number of parts in the unit. Hopefully, maybe improve the reliability. Get away from having to replace those gear platforms every year or two. So we replaced the front bumper wheels with some sensors. And so those sensors now, as the unit's going through the pool, will sense when it's close to the side of a wall or when it's near an obstruction and sensing that it has to steer around that. And then we took the rear paddle wheel and we turned it into two pieces. So we now have a split paddle wheel at the rear. So those two separate paddle wheels can rotate at different speeds, can rotate in opposite directions. So that allows the unit to steer more effectively as well. So we no longer use the bumper wheels to steer. We use the sensors to, to see when we're coming close to an obstruction. And then the uh, paddle wheels at the rear uh, work in to steer the unit more effectively than the uh, than, than the older units. So it's quite a bit, you know, smarter in that sense. Uh, when you look at it navigationally, uh, it'll just be more nimble and, and more effective in the pool, which means it'll also spend more time going forward and collecting debris, which, which is what it's supposed to do. The NX series of units, if it got stuck in an obstruction, it would reverse for 30 or 40 seconds and turn a little bit and then head off in another direction. But those units tended to if there was a lot of obstructions in the pool, spend more time running in, in reverse than we'd like. So with the steerability of the aerial, it'll be able to steer around those obstructions and uh, or just work a lot more effectively. Yeah, we think that's a, a huge piece because I remember we had a pool that had a solar breeze in it and they had like this boulder waterfall mm -hmm. and it was probably a few inches lower than the deck and it would kind of get stuck in there for a little bit. And it took a little while before it could kind of like pivot its way out from being caught under that rock. But there's also pools that when the water level would drop a little bit, right. it could get caught in the uh, kind the of under the deck. The bumper wheels would get just stuck yeah. underneath the coping a yeah, little bit. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so there's different issues like that. And of course, vacuum hoses, different things like that. But it's nice having the sensors to kind of just know when you're getting close to those boulders or to the edge of the pool. And it could just kind of back off and go in another direction. So huge, huge. 
Yeah, so the aerial unit will clean a lot more efficiently because it, it spends less time in reverse, but also it just it spends less time stuck on obstructions and those kinds of things uh, that we had some issues with the Solar Breeze, the NX series. Although the NX series still cleaned your pool, it was just maybe not as efficient because of the mechanical navigation system as, as this one will be. So those are, you know, the main changes. Other than that, still using solar panels to drive the unit. We're still using a, a rechargeable battery that charges up during the day and runs the unit during the night. Uh, we still have a nice fine mesh screen that filters out down to, you know, about 50 microns. So pretty much anything you see on the surface of your pool will get filtered out uh, by the screen as well. So you have all those same kind of general benefits uh, that you got with the solar breeze, but you have a unit that uh, is just a lot more efficient in the pool. We also have designed a cool handle uh, for the front of the unit as well. That was one of the issues we always got with feedback on the older solar breeze. It was hard to take in and out of the pool, so it now has a nice solid front handle that you can grab onto and, and pull it out of the pool. And uh, so that'll just make the whole uh, functionality of the unit for the customer better as well. That's major. Yeah. Cause you were, before you were kind of having to pick up the whole unit or just catch a lip somewhere and you drag it kind of out, <laughs> yeah. you know, but having that handle there and it actually looks like a handle um, you can just drag out. And then you had mentioned that some people might think that the, in the, on the top, the solar, that mm -hmm. that might look like a handle, but it's, you know, it's. Real yeah. Just you shouldn't kinda... grab it from the, uh, there's a, a viewing area. Um, if those are folks who are familiar with the older solar breeze, there was a window in the top. Well, we've actually gotten rid of the window because sometimes that plastic would fade in the after exposure to the sun and it was hard to see through so we said well we don't really need that window so it's just an opening in the top now that you can look through in the unit it looks good uh you can actually people can go to the website solar-breeze.com uh, where you used to see the nx2 and you can now see the uh, aerial unit there um, with all the cool colors that it is and functionality of the unit as well. But so there's still a, a viewing uh, window in the top. It just doesn't have a plastic cover on it like the old one did. And so you can see when the debris starts to get collected up in the unit, the handle makes it easy to remove from the pool, take over to your garbage can, slide out the tray, dump it in, slide the tray back in, put it back in your pool, turn on the switch and away you go again. It's really, as you know, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward to maintain. Yeah. The design is so cool too. It looks like you might've had some designers from Audi or something. <laughs> um, like it just looks like rounded and just a lot yeah. more sleek. It doesn't look as uh, maybe as intimidating as the last model. Not mm -hmm. that that was, but it's something I feel like people could just kind of identify with kind of like you were saying the, uh, like the Roomba, yeah. you know, it just kind of has that look like it's something that's user friendly. Yeah. And we went with some cool colors on the unit as well, uh, trying to update the image of the product also. So, and, uh, you know, we're starting to see more and more millennials owning pools now. So we wanted to, <laughs> to kind of tap, tap into, into that, that, to that, Market. Uh, um, you know, and, and they're, they love technology and they like, but they like their technology to look good and to, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, uh, feel good when they're using it as well. Yeah. As far as the uh, sensors go, I mean, what, how does it know the difference between like a leaf and a wall or something like that? Well, so it, there was a lot of work that went into some decisions around, you know, what kind of sensors are we going to use? And the engineering team uh, did a fair bit of research, but uh, they came up with, with some sensors that are pretty sensitive about what kind of uh, obstruction they're actually sensing. And then they have some capacity with within the software and within the hardware itself to sort of dial in the viewing range for the sensors and all those kinds of things to ensure that when the sensors are picking up data, they can be pretty confident that it's actually an obstruction as opposed to something like you, you said, a leaf or, uh, or, or something like that. It's probably not, you know, it's, it's never going to be 100% accurate, but at the same time, if it turns a little bit, even though there's not an obstruction, it's still in the pool. It's still collecting sure. up debris and it's still running close to, uh, to 24 hours a day. Yeah. And you guys have done a lot of work with the, between the sensor and the technology, right? Right. Of communicating with one another. Yeah. So there's, so creating a whole new navigation system for a robot is not, is not necessarily, uh, uh, an insignificant 
thing to do technologically. Sure. Um, but once again, that's where we're really fortunate that the team of engineers that we are now part of our team um, uh, with Pivot have uh, done a great job in terms of dialing all that in. And I got I to gotta tell you, I don't even understand some of uh, all that's gone into the decision-making process, but I trust these guys because they're pretty smart. It's electronic robot that lives in water and in sun yeah. most of the time. I mean, there's a lot of detail that goes into something like that. And, and that was one of the areas where we, where we really did focus on with the redesign too, was to ensure that, you know, all of the components were, were sealed, that the unit itself was, um, uh, was sealed from any kind of water intrusion. So we changed the design of how the top and the bottom piece come together and how that ceiling works pretty substantially. And uh, once again, it's, you know, we've, we've already put this unit through a lot of rigor with respect to that. And it seems like uh, all of that new design is working pretty effectively with respect to uh, keeping the water out of the unit and keeping the chlorine gases out of the unit and the things that can mess up the electronics. Yeah, I've always been pretty um, amazed with how long they survive and last in those environments because not only the water or in this being in the sun all the time, but also the chemical challenge that you have to it's just living in you know a chemical environment. So it's when we had them, I mean, they were very impressive and how long they ran. And if we did have an issue with the bumper or something, you guys took care of it automatically and immediately, which was awesome. But I think a lot of that's going to be solved with the new aerial, and it seems like you guys have done a lot of research and development in, into this product. You know, I think anybody that, you know, buys a new product, they need to communicate with the manufacturer if they're having any issues. And I think that you guys take feedback really well, um, where I think that people are having, they buy a pump or a filter or something like that, and they're having issues with it. And they're super pissed off. And they're going on these, you know, blogs and, you know, the Facebook groups and social media, and they're putting their two cents in, but they never kind of relay that message to the manufacturer. And I think that, you know, if you're taking on this new technology and something isn't working quite right, like make it a point to send, you know, Paul and the team an email or anything like that, because, I know you guys pretty well, and I think that, you know, you guys listen to that feedback really well, and you'll take care of it. Yeah, we do our best to to respond um, both in a timely and honest and effective manner. We're doing a ton of testing with this product, probably more than we've ever done with, with any new product we brought before. So we feel like when we start delivering to customers in the spring, we're going to have a high level of confidence with respect to the performance and reliability on the product. But it's like you say, you know, a new product is a new product and there will be things that come up that we either hadn't thought of or, or didn't cover in testing or, or even kind of unique situations that pool professionals may have with their customers where, where the product doesn't, you know, fit exactly right into. And yeah, we just need to hear about those. If, if something comes up and someone puts an aerial in a customer's pool and, and they have an issue with it, there's no value to us in having unhappy customers, and we want to try to deal with those issues as fast as we can. Right. And I have I have two more questions on the aerial. Do the sensors know when it's getting close to the edge of a negative edge pool? Yeah, so they're going to be designed, or the sensors are dialed in so that they'll have some capacity to to sense the negative edge pool as well. Now, that's going to be one of the more difficult issues for the unit. So we're also probably going to do some simple timing navigations so that just in case a unit gets caught in a situation where the sensors didn't pick it up, it's not going to sit there forever. You know, after a certain amount of time, it's going to reverse and turn and and do some things like that. Right. And I don't think a lot of negative edge pools might necessarily need it since it's all falling into the catch. But so the second thing is, Do the solar panels need direct sunlight, or even if it's overcast, does that still work? Yeah, the unit runs with indirect sunlight or overcast. So the unit will start operating typically as early as 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning in the summertime when the sun is just sort of coming up. We actually have a, uh, a program in the unit we call Hunt for Sun, where in the early morning stages, it'll kind of do a little few operations around the pool and and look for sunlight if it's stopped during the day. But even if you have an overcast day, eventually as the sun gets up, 
it'll charge the unit up to operating capacity with the battery, and it'll run all day in the sunlight. Sometimes what you have with an, when you have an overcast day is the battery won't get charged as much during the day as it would if you had a, a really sunny day. And so as a result, when the sun goes down, it may not run as long at night. But the way the software is set up is that, you know, when the battery gets down to a certain level, the unit just shuts itself off. The, you know, the LED lights flash and, and things like that. And then when the sun comes up in the morning, it goes through its hunt for sun routine. It finds a sunny spot in the pool. It uh, recharges itself and away it goes and runs all day again. Right. And for any companies that want to share this with their customers or anything like that, and they want to buy it, how do they go about either getting on the waiting list? Because I know this isn't coming out until the spring. How do people go about doing that? Um, You can send me an email, uh, paul at solar-breeze.com. Solar-breeze.com is my email address. You know, we'll get you set up. There's a couple of options for pool professionals. We can set you up as a dealer. So we have dealer pricing and we can share that with you and you can buy them direct from us and resell them to your customers. We also have some options we call a referral marketing partner program where if you don't want to handle inventory, don't want to do that sort of thing, we'll set you up as a referral marketing partner, set you up with a a unique discount code which you can give to your customers. And if they come to our website and buy the product using that discount code, then we give you a referral fee on the on the back end. So a couple of different options, whichever way you want to do it. We're not selling this product through distribution. We don't have any plans to do that um, next year or probably even the year after. We may go in that direction at some point. Uh, so we're we're selling just dealer direct at this point in time. So if you if you want to sell to your uh, this product to your customers or refer it, you can either work as a dealer where you buy it from us and and resell it or as a referral marketing partner. Very good. Thank you. And, you know, when you're pitching this to your customers, to all you listeners, be careful how you say things because I feel like I made the mistake of selling this to a customer and uh, we went to send them an uh, invoice for everything that we had discussed during the pool service bid. And they said, oh, yeah, everything sounds good. You can take off the Solar Breeze RD already bought it online off your guys' website. And I was like, what the, f- what the heck, man? That was going to be my first one. Um, so after that, I ended up, I don't know if you recommend this, but I just said that um, we do have these in stock. So I just wanted to make you aware that we do have these in stock. So if you do want one, we'll make sure that we can bring it from our warehouse to your pool. <laughs> and deliver it tomorrow. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And, and uh, for uh, – Pool service professionals here in Arizona where we're located, that works great. Um, for folks on the rest of the country, we can drop ship to customers too. We do that for other um, professionals around the country that, you know, they have a customer. Uh, they sell the unit to the customer. They send us the order and we just drop ship the unit to the customer. So, oh, uh, cool. yeah, we can we can do that as well. And what's the uh, warranty on this? And maybe you can talk about the price point after that if it's sure. around the same amount. Sure. So the um, warranty is one year repair or replace warranty. Our typical kind of standard warranty approach is that, you know, if anything fails within the first 90, 120 days, we just send them a new unit, have send them a shipping label. They send it back to us and away we go. And especially if if something happens in the heart of the pool season, we typically tend more towards simply replacing a product as opposed to uh, to repairing it. If it's if it's more in kind of the outside of the pool season, we'll send the customer a shipping label. They'll send it to us, and we'll put it through our repair shop, and and we'll repair it. I was going to say, what do you think is the best way to go about that? So, say that we sell Mr. and Mrs. Jones and Ariel should we give you their name and information or should they do everything themselves? Because I mean, it's what, what if the service changes? Yeah. I mean, we might not clean yeah. their pool forever, but you want to make sure that... It's it's whichever way, you know, you guys want to handle it or the, the professional wants to handle it. I think a lot of people find that it works best if we just work direct with the customer. And we're happy to do that. You know, they can contact us directly if they have a warranty or service issue. 
we need to send them a label, we'll do that. You know, they can ship it into us. We can uh, uh, fix it and return it to them or send them a replacement, whichever, whichever seems to make the most sense. You know, if the pool professional prefers to provide that service to the customer, we're happy to work with them as well. So which, whichever, they, whichever um, they prefer. We have an opportunity for customers when they purchase a product, either from you or from us, to register that warranty on our website. If they do that, their information gets into our database. So that makes the warranty issue uh, a little bit easier to manage. If we don't have that information and they contact us, then we'll simply ask them to hey, just email us a copy of your order that you had or your sales receipt, and we'll just set up the information in our system off of that and go from there. We're happy to handle it either way. You know, whichever the pool service professional prefers. Okay. And what is the price point on the Ariel? Ariel is going to retail in the spring at 528, which is actually a little cheaper than the NX2 units had been selling the last couple of years. We're pricing it in an area where we feel like we can get some good growth in the marketplace. We're offering it on our website as a pre-sale for customers at 448 for a limited quantity of pre-sale units if uh, customers want to step up and buy. And we also have some special deals available for dealers in this introductory period as well, which if you want to email me, paul at solar-breeze.com, I'm happy to share our dealer pricing with you as well. All right. You just answered my next question. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> Primate Pool Tools are the creators of the first carbon fiber poles in the industry. They use aerospace-grade carbon fiber that makes them five times stronger than aluminum, which allows you to cut through water with ease. They have options for residential and commercial service and offer three models of poles as well as an extension system that can extend your reach up to 40 feet. Not only that, but they are made here in the USA, come with a one-year commercial warranty, and you get access to their top-notch customer service. Primate is excited to announce that they will be releasing custom Primate poles. Stand out from the crowd by grabbing a limited edition poll with original art designed by the Primate team. They're coming soon to Primate Web Store at primatepooltools.net. And when you place your order, don't forget to use Pool Chasers 10 at checkout for $10 off. To find out more, check out episode 104 of the podcast or click the link below. Perfect. So let's move on. You guys are now working with the uh, SkimBot. Now that's a part of the Yeah, the so line. SkimBot is actually our brand. We were approached by a company in Czech Republic who had developed also a solar-powered robotic skimmer, uh, but they didn't really have any channels to market to how they were going to sell this thing. So we looked at it and we thought, hey, this is actually a pretty cool product. Um, it has a it has a mobile app that you can download on your phone and you can actually run the unit off your app if you want. You can uh, actually drive it. You can actually so- drive it as, <laughs> as a remote control robot if you're which if you're into that sort of thing. Which um, I did not know until this right this morning earlier because we were talking about it. I'm like, man, I wonder if you just turn it on and see some buttons flash. I'm like, that's not that cool. But then you get into, no, no, I can drive it in the pool. You just that's- say if, if you're into that kind of thing. Who, who's <laughs> yeah, not? Who's not? <laughs> who's not into that? If you're not into that kind of thing, like, I think you're bullshitting. <laughs> oh, man. that's so, It's such it's so, so cool. So, uh, <laughs> And then, uh, so it also has, you can set some operating parameters in the app and it tells you where the, uh, you know, how much battery charge you have and how much solar charge you're getting and, and those kinds of things too. You can, you know, anyone who's interested, we actually have a separate website for SkimBot. It's at uh, skimbot.com, S-K-I-M-B-O-T.com. You can see the product there as well. So we entered into an agreement with the folks in Czech Republic we actually registered the trademark SkimBot ourselves. So SkimBot is our brand, but they're manufacturing uh, the product for us and, and did the design and engineering work on it. We're pretty excited about it too. So we really have two products to bring into the marketplace for 2021. The SkimBot is actually available now. We have units in stock if you wanted to buy something and, and get delivery right away. It's priced a little bit higher. The retail price on the SkimBot is six eighty nine. You know, we see it more uh, geared towards folks that are really 
into the technology of robots and, and doing that sort of thing. So we feel like having Ariel, which is going to be in that you know $500 price range, and the Skimbot, which is a little bit higher but offers a little bit more technology and a little bit more coolness perhaps with some of the uh, operational things, we think it puts us in a position to really kind of explode this whole category. We think this category has the opportunity to be as big as the bottom cleaning robotic category. We think that the value offered to customers is good in as much as as what robotic bottom cleaners offer. And so we think we can grow this business in this category to be a substantial part of the pool industry and the pool market. We now have the relationships in terms of capital and engineering and manufacturing to be able to, to do that. And so we're just super excited about coming up to 2021 here. And, and we're really going to be focused on expanding our dealer organization, building new relationships with pool professionals all over North America and for that matter, all over the world. And just really telling the story about these two great products that we have to offer that uh, really solve legitimate problems for swimming pool owners. Well said. Thank you, Paul. I'm curious, though, about this guy. How close do you need to be in order to use the application? So the Bluetooth will work typically up to about uh, two to 300 feet, so um, about 100 yards. I'm just trying to think if I could sit in my truck while this guy cleans the pool. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, sitting on your truck on the street, it kind of depends on how far – in the backyard the pool is, but you we'll, could, te- we'll test it out for you. You could, we'll you could, you should be able to sit in your living room. Living room, air conditioned. Yeah, uh, air conditioned, <laughs> lo- which looks out on the pool and go. run it from there. I could just see it now. You're watching football on Sunday and you got your app open <laughs> and you just get so excited that this gust of wind came through be like, well, so, whoop, got babe. some waves. Babe, uh-huh. the wind's blowing. I'm cleaning the pool. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. I Look. <laughs> Look, I'm about to hit this pile of leaves right now. Whoa. That's too cool. I love it. Now, just so everyone knows, and I, I agree the remote control is pretty cool, but it doesn't have to be used by remote control, just so everyone knows, too. You can, you can put the skim bot in your pool, turn on the switch, turn it on, and uh, it'll, uh, it'll do just like the Solar Breeze does, uh, clean your pool and keep it clean. Very cool feature. <laughs> I will be using the remote control feature. Most of the time. <laughs> well, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. You can go into autopilot though, and you can yeah. do it. It'll still do it while you're not there. But yeah, exactly. It's pretty fun. It's pretty awesome. So one last question before we wrap this up, Paul, is anybody that has the older Solar Breeze NX and any of those models, and they're still under warranty and all those different things. Do you have anything to say to those people in terms of warranty and all that good hey, stuff? Hey, look, we'll want, we'll honor warranty on all of the units that are out there. Anyone who has a unit that uh, that's still under warranty, that's not an issue at all. If anything comes up and happens with it, we'll repair or replace just like our warranty policy said we would. We'll also, for folks that have units that, older units that are outside of warranty, we'll be offering some opportunities to upgrade to you know, either one of these new products at an advantageous price. We always like to offer what we call our legacy owners some advantage in in doing that. So once again, we don't have anything officially published on that, but people can contact us and we'll uh, work with them on, on those issues. But yeah, hey, our, our existing customers are really important to us. We want to keep them. That's how we'll continue to grow our business as we add new customers. We'll look after people out there uh, that that have existing solar breeze units and make sure they stay happy. I think you you mentioned the bottom cleaners too. I think one of the real benefits of this is that the equipment doesn't have to run for these. So I think you have an advantage with the solar as well. It doesn't cost the customer any money, you know, to run the system and run the vacuum. So that's another pretty cool, pretty cool option for these. Yeah, a lot of our customers find that they can reduce the amount of time they run their pool cleaning equipment and their pool pump by 40 or 50 percent, you know, because they're just not getting as much debris and bacteria growth in their pool. And so that can be a significant cost savings um, uh, for customers as well, particularly as energy costs continue to climb and and, and grow. It can be a, an important uh, part. Yeah, we feel like, you know, it's a, a good good for your convenience, keeps your pool clean, keeps it sparkling clean all the time. You don't have to do a lot of work in it. 
uh, costs saves you some money on electricity bills, and uh, you know at the end of the day, because of that, probably uh, reduces your environmental footprint with your swimming pool as well. And we think that that maybe has a positive aspect as well. Yeah, for sure. Well, we've had a really good relationship with you for several years, and always enjoy working with Solar Breeze, and we're super excited for these two new products because. We think you guys have really done a lot of work in engineering and design and kind of taken into thought, you know, many of the things that people have mentioned, like we had mentioned some of these things to you and you always listen and improve it. And we love, you know, working with you guys because of that. So we really appreciate the relationship and appreciate you being on here with us. Well, thanks again. And and I, I want to say I'm, I'm really impressed with you guys being an entrepreneur myself. I know how, uh, challenging it can be sometimes to take a step off a cliff into an area where <laughs> you don't know where, what, what's at the bottom, right? And and you guys kind of did that with this podcast a couple of years ago. And, you know, I know it takes uh, takes some courage to take that risk. And I'm I'm really uh, pleased for you guys that it's turned out well. And, and I think you guys offer a great service to the pool industry to help keep everybody up to date on on what the new technologies and new skills and procedures are for pool professionals. So congratulations to you guys as well. We we really appreciate this relationship. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very much, very Paul. Much. Hey, Pool Chasers. Thanks for checking out this episode. Did you know that each episode has its own page on our website? This is where you can find more information about the guests and episode topic, as well as all the resources that we discuss throughout the show. To get to the webpage, click the link below. Also below, you will find links to the sponsors of the show, as well as links to follow us on our social media channels. On our channels, you will find some of our favorite clips and bonus material. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Our tag is Pool Chasers. We also have a Facebook group for the Pool Chasers community. Here you will find like-minded professionals all looking to make each other better. One last thing, if the episode has brought you value, please check out our Patreon page to support us. And if you could please rate and review the podcast, we would love to hear what your favorite topics are. Thank you for your time and your ear. See you out there, pool chasers. chasers.